welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about a film by Hideo Sekigawa, which is the last time I'm going to try and pronounce his name because obviously I just butchered it. And it's Hiroshima, which has just come out uh, by Arrow Academy. And it's a, a wonderful haunting film about Hiroshima bombing, you know, in, in the end of World War II as this was the bomb that came, that ended the war basically by saying like we've this Americans dropping on one location saying to the Japan, look, we can bomb the entire country as we just surrender now. And they, of course they surrendered. But this is about this is not about well it deals with tactics, it's about the horror of war, the horror of the situation in the aftermath. So we, the film starts out basically like ten years later, you know much I guess ten years after the event, we're basically People have come back to the area, they've, they've rebuilt the city but there's, there's still people in the schools who were at Hiroshima at the time who were um, burnt and are damaged and are coughing up blood and they're having major problems and uh, the, the kids who come in from the outside of Japan afterwards who aren't affected by this at all I've no sympathy for them because they think they're pushing it a bit too far until they start to realise how bad it was as they get from information from the teacher like how bad the situation was and how badly damaged people were by the situation. Because a few of them make silly jokes about it and, 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 and uh, <laughs> they're beaten down pretty fast by the teacher verbally. And then as they find out one of their classmates is really sick, they visit her and they realise how bad it is. And then, and then you go into the past, into the memory of this classmate, and then from that memory you go to the overall picture of what happened in Hiroshima, where you see Hiroshima being this state that was part of Japan, that had, um, was part of the Japanese like infrastructure of, we were a war state, we, are, we were going to keep fighting this war, we're, even though America has defeated the Nazis at this point, and America has, you know, it's coming out of Japan, all the forces are in, Russia's joined the fight against Japan, everybody, the whole world is based around Japan saying like, surrender, you've lost, they're not going to surrender. And, and they're training all their children to learn to fight and learn to kill to the last and it's all about this militarism. And in the, in the early parts of the film before you do the flashback, there's a concern that the militarism is coming out, back into Japanese character. And the, and the people are kind of scared about it because it's like that led to disaster before. And here you see the the mania that these people have, that these generals have about making sure the civilians fight to the last, even the little kids who have nothing to do with this war. And these people are just trying to survive amongst this militarization. And then the bomb hits. And the bomb hits uh, after there's been a Air raid and everyone thinks it's fine, they go back out, and that's some new bomb hits. And um, the centre of Hiroshima just totaled. Completely totaled. And so, so a lot of people are dead instantly. There's also the people who survived that bit and who are dealing with the fires and the burns they've got on them, and they, all the people who have died from the collapse and buildings collapsing on them, and People who, are, who lie in the buildings hoping someone will come and get them before they die and it doesn't happen, no one comes to get them. So you see these characters talking about will someone come to get us, then you go back a few scenes later and they're dead. You know, it's like, it's brutal, there's no sentimentality at all, it's like, this is like, um, the music suggests this is almost like a wrath of God type of thing, it's kind of a weird religiosity about it and sadness to it, like this is just like a boom and they're all dead. All the, all, all of them are injured as well and it's like, whoa. And this this goes on for like 40 minutes, this whole sequence of these people trying to survive in the outbreak and uh, you see teachers try to take their children, take the children out of the area and them um, slowly succumbing to the radiation and basically drowning as they try and cross the river and they the, the lack the strength to get there. You see fathers looking for their children, and then when he finally finds the child, one of the children, he, the children has died. You know, that's brutal. You've got um, other people just trying to 
find ways to survive, try and find ways to mentally survive as people who are around them are just dying one by one, just like they're just lying there and slowly dying. And as the film goes on, you start they start to see, look, the bomb destroyed everything, but it hasn't wiped out the ability of the area. There's not actually that much radiation left in the area. It's actually always a one-off and boom, gone. And things can start growing again. So as the film goes on, you start to see people having to do deal with all the sicknesses as the area starts to grow and as life starts to go on again even though a lot of people are devastated, a lot of people are never going to survive, their bodies have been ravaged and there's no way they're going to get married or anything, they've been become social pariahs and they still have to try and make do, make a living and for other people who may have not been may not have been physically scarred but they're emotionally scarred, like there's a family where a boy lost his sister and he never finds her and he's just trying to survive, he's trying to mentally survive and they're worried he's going to go into a life of crime because it's Hiroshima and there's a lot of crime around and he tries to go and work in a factory but then he quits that job and eventually they ask him well, why did you quit and he goes well they're starting to make munitions again he says I cannot do that, that's after what happened war, war, the war, I cannot physically do that, I just can't do it and you find that that's why he was become so cynical and so dark because he was like he just couldn't find a place for himself in the world, the world had moved on and seemed to have almost forgotten about the horrors of Hiroshima even though we've been seeing it in the film and how horrible it was so this is a film as a reminder to the Japanese people how horrible Hiroshima was and how people were moving on quickly and too quickly and we're forgetting the lessons of Hiroshima because it was convenient to forget. That's what happens to humanity all the time. It's like, we yeah, we'll always remember then. It's convenient we don't remember at the moment because it's not good for us to remember because we want to follow this agenda now. You know, that's that's the way human beings are. And this film is like bashing back against that and saying, no, you have to remember, you have to have this whole, so this whole sequence in the middle of the film about how horrible Hiroshima was, how people died horribly, how these innocent people were just brutalised, first by the system make them try to learn to fight when they couldn't and then by the, the war and the bomb hitting them and and then the, the slow recovery and basically people didn't hit the area for a long time people were just scared of the area and it's like it, is, it was just a living hell and the Japanese were very slow to um, surrender because they thought they could still win even after the bomb had gone off and it's like it was just insanity, it just has showed you how crazy Japan had got at that time. So it's a, it's a film about the actual victims of the war, the people who didn't have a choice in the matter but whose lives were absolutely destroyed by it. And I mean the father looking for his son, the, the, the kid from the later on in the film, he's our son who found his, basically finds his father just as his father's dying. So I mean the whole family is devastating. It's really about that I mean, although there's all, all the characters involved, this film is going to through line to the story. And it is just a devastating film. It is, it is horrible, but in a good way because it just reminds you how horrible life can be and how horrible an atomic bomb is. Like, you do not want this let loose on the world. You really don't. You know, they, they, people use it as a thriller ideas all the time, nuclear weapons and stuff, but the actual reality of it is much more horrific than you ever want to see occur in your lifetime. It's, this film is just devastating. So, I highly recommend seeing it. It's available on Arrow. You can easily find it. Uh, so there's no real excuse. Just go see it. It is, it is really worth your time. It's about something serious. It's about militarization, it's about the effects of nuclear sickness. It is just devastating. And what is one of the best films I've seen this year? I mean it came out in 53, 54 and it has aged beautifully because it is still timely and still very haunting. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon with another video. Right, bye for now.